Hello viewers, how are you? Hope you are fine. Welcome back to my channel, Drawing Time with Story. If you are new in my channel, I will introduce myself and my channel with you. I am Suraya Parvin and in my channel, I select an object or a theme to draw and while drawing, I will tell you a story. I will deliver you some information related to the topic or we just simply share our personal experiences or the occurrences just happen around us so let's get started for our today's topic as you saw our today's topic is the moonlit night and it is the part two of the story sunlight and the moonlight so let's jump to the story time in our part one we um, <coughs> We heard that sunlight was caught at the hand of shoulders and we will just wonder how it will happen to moonlight. So this is the next part. The shoulders gathered around sunlight, bound his hands behind his back, flung him on a horse and without giving him a moment to bid farewell to the grief stricken old hermit, rude Erwin not until the captain had gone far over the desert on their way to the khan's palace did you remember that he had been told there were two boys living with the hermit he stopped abruptly filled his horse around and gave orders that the troop should return at once to the old man's cave Sunlight guessed what was in the captain's mind and his heart sank. There will be no possible escape this time for my brother, he thought. The soldiers will surprise Moonlight before he has time to hide. At last, he groaned aloud. Oh, is me, he said, alas, and who oh, is my fate? Would that I had died with my brother before I had to be taken away. What do you mean by that? said the captain. What should I mean by what I say? said Sunlight. With he groaned again. When we came to the door of our cave, we had just returned from digging the grave of my dear brother. And now, surely the poor old man our foster father will die of grief for both his son are lost to him all in the space of one day the captain drew rain and the soldiers behind him halted the heat of the desert was great and he did not want to travel the long distance back to the cave of the red door for, for no reason Young man, he said strangely to the sunlight, Is it indeed true that your brother is dead, and that there is now no strange earth in the cave of the hermit? Have I not said it? replied sunlight. Indeed, I don't know which I wish the more, that I were dead beside my brother, or that he were here beside me to share my troubles. Then he wept aloud. The captain hesitated. Then he slowly turned his horse and gruffly instructed his soldiers to proceed to the palace of the Khan. Sunlight's heart bounded with joy and relief for his brother as he loved his brother so much. But he still continued to moan and groan so the soldiers would continue to believe his story. It was a long distance to the Khan city. And by the time sunlight and his cruel captors had reached the palace gates, the sun was setting. Now it happened that the Khan had two children, both daughters, and his elder daughter was at that moment sitting on the low roof of the palace, enjoying the cool early evening air. Looking down into the street below, she saw the line of soldiers riding by, with sunlight in their midst, his head bowed and his hands bound behind him. 
he looked up and his eyes met those of the princess the light of the setting sun rested on his black hair his face was pale and his eyes big and sorrowful never thought the princess had she seen so handsome a young man and he looking up at her that she learned over the roof thought she must be a vision of his imagination so fair and lovely was she the princess then made haste to inquire who the lad might be and soon learned that he was a strange youth condemned because of the prophecy to be thrown to the demon bears the very next day then she rushed rushed to her father the khan and kneeling before him she begged him to spare the life of this fair young stranger now the khan lived in daily dread that the prophecy concerning an unknown young man who would some day take over his crown might come true so when his daughter asked him to release this fellow who might be the very one foretold in the prophecy he fell into a terrible rage still she continued to beg her father for the young man's life at last the khan's temper broke all bounds he summoned his soldiers and pointing to the princess cried take her away she cares more for this upstart stranger than for the safety and throne of her father cast her into a dungeon to and tomorrow choose two strong sex tie this strong youth into one of them my daughter into the other then cast both of them into the cave of the demon bears the princess thought she could ever fainted from very terror was too proud to show her fear and too noble to weep for her life so she silently allowed the rough soldiers to bind her hands and lead her away at sunrise the next day everything was prepared as the khan had ordered and the two unfortunate young people were thrust into huge sacks which were tied about their necks then they were cast into an open rocky cave by a river where the demon bears came daily to drink sunlight sighed deeply as he saw the princess beside him her fair face and long hair showing from above the sack alas said he and ten times ten alas that i should die is nothing for what am i but a stranger and an outcast but of oh, the cruel pity of it that you loveliest princess should perish too no fair yet said the khan's elder daughter do not mourn for me i am only an unthinking girl whose life or death can mean nothing to the world and since it is my father's will that i die in this day in this way willing am i to obey him but that you should meet such a cruel fate and only because you were a stranger indeed that seems more than my sad heart can bear while these two noble young creatures were grieving for the hurt lot of the other one forgetting their own troubles the three demon bears drew near and overheard their talk and the heart of the chief of them was softened at their words he turned to his companions the unselfishness of these two young mortals moves me to pity if there is such bravery in the heart of humans i am minded never to eat human flesh again the other two also being touched by the beauty and nobleness of their captives readily agreed with the chief 
and they resolved to begin at once to be the friends and not the fearful enemies of humans. As they entered the cave, they saw the sunlight, and the princess grew white with terror at the sight of them. So the chief called out, "Not, do not afraid." The heart of a demon bear is not always as cruel as men say. We have come not to devour you, but to set you free, a lad and lass, who in such a dear state think only of each other, deserve to live long in peace. So now, by the magic power, I declare your bonds broken. Go and from henceforth think of the demon bears as no longer enemies but friends. Once freed, the princess went back to her father, who was overcome with sorrow and regret now that his anger had cooled, and sunlight hastened back to the cave in the desert to relieve the minds of the good old hermit and moonlight, his faithful brother. Not long later, as perhaps you supposed, there was a great royal wedding, a double one in fact. For not only did sunlight marry the lovely elder princess, but moonlight found an almost equally beautiful bride in her younger sister. The prophecy which the Khan had dreaded for so long came true, but in a very different way than he had never expected. It turns out that he did indeed lose his throne and crown to a strange lad, but he gave them up of his own free will to sunlight. Because he had grown to love his son his son in law so dearly, and because he was old and weary and had no greater wish in life than to see his elder daughter and her husband ruling over the kingdom. So they all lived happily ever after, and over years the, they soon paid a visit to Sunlight's father and found him grown old and grey, sorrowing for his two dear lost sons. The wicked queen had meanwhile died just because she was too weak to live. Sunlight's new father-in-law was happy to offer Sunlight's father a position of great importance and his palace. So the father was reunited with the two young men and everybody lived happily ever after. Oh, a very beautiful ending of the story. So by listening my story, if you forget to subscribe my channel please subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever i release a new video and a new story to entertain you and if you have any request or question about my video about my channel or simply just me then feel free to ask me in the comment section because my comment section is always free for you i always try to read every comments and reply them or just simply reach you a heart sign so stay with me stay with drawing time this story we will we'll draw together we will learn together we will gossip together and we will do a better thing together so how was the story today and how was the drawing today please let me know in my comment section i will wait for your precious comments and please stay safe and stay healthy in this pandemic situation Take the safety measures whenever you go out of your home. Keep safe and stay safe. See you soon with my new video, with my new story and with the new drawing. So till then, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye.